Hi, this is a presentation for Siemens basic programming, but this is a class that we're only going to talk about the uh, hardware in this instance. Um, this is a Siemens trainer that they produce. Um, it's a suitcase trainer that uh, comes with a little bit of a conveyor belt. Um, this is something we got directly from them. Um, your hardware may look differently, but not by much. It should be very similar, uh, well, especially if you have a 1200 series processor. If you have a 300 series, it's going to look slightly different, but we'll discuss some of those differences. That may look more like a traditional processor, input card, input card, kind of a rack setup that, that you may have seen before. But this is our, our trainer setup, and it has a couple things I just want to draw your attention to. Um, first things first is over here. This is a power supply you, that you can see and and look and and the model number. That's uh, important. You can see it right here. And this is a network card. Um, notice though, there you may may think that it's all connected by a backplane, but we'll get to that in a second. You can see a feed in the, for AC, and you can see an output of DC coming out um, with, with European conventions. And here you can see power being fed here for the network switch, um, That because a lot of what Siemens does to communicate is over a ProfiNet connection, and you need the con multiple connections to be able to link to the processor and all of its devices, as we will see. Um, here is my processor. Um, the nice thing about the pro this type of processor, it has embedded I.O. already in it. So let me zoom in on that a little bit more. Um, you can see that a couple differences right away in this processor. One, there's no hardwire, uh, hardware switch that will change it from run to stop. Like uh, some processors have that on the outside so that you can turn it, turn it off right there at the processor. Not the case with Siemens. Um, you, you, you have that capability, but only in the TIA portal software. The other thing is if you look, we're connected using a Ethernet cable. There is no USB port for you to connect to this processor. Everything is done by a, a, a network. The nice thing, though, is the Siemens software has some ways to go around IP mismatches, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, this is the, the type of processor it is, S7-1200 series, and this is the hardware designation for this processor. Um, it is a 1214C processor. That's important that, when, that you know when you start setting up your hardware. The other thing is right here that's important to know, these, this, this three slash letter series. This is the power requirements for this processor gener generally. DC, the first set of DC value stands for the what powers the processor itself. You could see AC here, but in this case this is a DC processor. Here is what powers the inputs. In this case, this is a DC input uh, processor. It could also be AC. The last one is the what powers the outputs. This is a DC output processor. Now you may also see AC here. You also might see something called Relay. Relay allows you to choose, uh, let it be dealer's choice, so to speak. If you want to run half your inputs as AC, you can. If you want to run your other half as DC, you can. If you want to run 24 volt AC outputs and then 120 volt AC outputs, you could. It will clearly denote like four bits of one set of relay contacts and another four bits of another type of relay contacts if this says RLY. So be be wary of that as you're as you're running. Also, right here's your status lights. If it's green, it's in run mode. If it's like a red, it's in stop mode. It, if you're doing some type of forcing or doing some type of diagnostic, this maintenance light will be on. And, of course, error self-explanatory. If you've done something to blow the processor up or there, it, it doesn't understand something or there's a power issue, this will be in error. Now, one nice thing that we'll get to 
is when we start communicating, you can flash LEDs to make sure that you're communicating with the right processor. These are the lights you will look for. It will flash between a, a, a green and a, and a amber or a, and off. Um, so these are what you're looking for when it says flash LEDs. Here's your inputs, on, usually on the top. Here's your outputs. Let me give you a little bit closer look what that looks like. With the flap down, you can see how these get programmed. Over here, you can see L plus and, and M input. This is where you power your processor. Um, this, and this is asking for 24 volts VDC. You may see that it requires 120 AC, just so read carefully. This is your ground wire here, and this is a output. This processor has a power support, internal power supply embedded in this that has some capability to power your inputs and outputs. So be be aware and be aware of that. Um, so here, this is your power positive out and M in uh, 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 your common out. Um, here where it says 1M, that's looking for your uh, uh, another common. And you can see that it's just jumpering from one, one side to the other. How we power these inputs is we take L1, for instance, feed that out to my output and feed that out to my switches. And that as they kind of link it together and uh, daisy chain together. And on the other side of the switch, each individual switch, we will run to each one of these terminals to represent an input. Now, if you notice, it will say zero, uh, dot zero, dot one, dot two, dot three. That's because I won't know automatically what quote unquote slot number this is until I designate it in my software. In the 1200 series, Siemens allows for a lot of configuration that you can have with my inputs. So if I wanted this to be 105.0, 105.1, et cetera, et cetera, the only thing it's going to ask is to ensure that this comes right after it. In the 300 series, your first set of inputs would usually be a 0 and 1. Your second set of inputs would be a 2 and a 3, while your outputs would be a 4 and a 5 and a, and a, and a 7 and an 8, and never should those two numbers cross. Not necessarily true in the 1200 series. Uh, so uh, be aware of that if you're going, changing from a 300 series controller to a, a 1200 series controller. This processor also allows for some analog inputs. Here's my second common, a zero channel and a one channel. So it allows you to use both. Um, we have nothing in this though being used for an input uh, for analog input at this time because I have a separate input card for that. Okay. And if one of these input lights are on, the corresponding light below will turn on. So let's take a look at the output side. Here is the output side. Um, this will give me the, if everything is good for communicating purposes, it also will give me the hardware MAC address for the, this processor. This will be important for when you communicate and you don't know the IP address. Um, here is my outputs. Once again, it's asking for a line in and a common here um, but in this case what these outputs are powering my outputs so the line in is going to be important because it'll send the signal out when the output logic turns on one thing to note is does the, what is this letter right here that is a Q not an O in Siemens land outputs are Q's not O's because Q's are distinct than O's. So you'll see this would be, for instance, Q0.0, Q0.1, if we determine that this is slot 0 for in, in the processor. When you're setting up your hardware, this number here is the, is the part number you're looking for if you want to do it manually. Okay? And, of course, here is my output, an output card. Your processor may not have this analog, analog output card. If I go back a second, you'll see that there's a little notch here that I could take out a blank and put in a output processor because I have an input for analog but no output for analog. Well, this is a card I can add for an output analog that will embed right on the processor without having to have a whole extra card. And you can see it, this is the catalog number, 
and this is the out, the output capabilities with plus or minus 10 volts DC or 0 to 20 milliamps so it can do either output signal um, once again I have all my outputs there and notice I only have uh, 10 output capabilities and they'll cut and they'll designate it a and B not one and zero and one just because there is so much fluidity in the configuration so if I wanted to have cards attached and say okay I have, I have more than 10 outputs and more than uh, you know 16 inputs I can add cards to my processor you'll see if you open this up there's gonna be like a little small gray tab here that that I have to remove and that's where my input cards sync together. In some processors, it's called a back plane. In this case, it's a front plane. Everything is connected via the front. When you, when you buy these, this little I little bracket will be pushed over to the right. And I would need to push in and then drag over to the left. So you can see that by the A, I, and A, Q here that this is an analog card. So if I push this, this tab in, it will sync in here, and I can power this processor. Now it still requires a pow power on the top side, but this will allow communication, and it will t to know that the hardware is there. Um, so this has a four-channel out uh, four, uh, you know, inputs and outputs for, for analog, A, I, A, Q. Um, this is digital. This is the catalog number right here that you, we would look for um, if we are doing some more uh, manual hardware configuration. Okay? But notice this front row is this terminals back here. Uh, the, and this, and oh, this, is, this row here is the back row right here. And this is my, my front row. And notice I would need two comments fed here. And this is the line in and common to power the, the whole card. Um, I do need both to power the card for diagnostic purposes. But once again, DIA, so this would be a, a random slot A and random slot B and slot A for my outputs, depending on what I designated. So this is the basic hardware configuration setup. Um, these are, are electrically isolated, so you don't need to combine them with a, with the, with the on the quote unquote front plane. But this is you you might need a separate output if you're powering a lot of uh, power supply if you're powering a lot of inputs. Um, this has a you know, just like any type of electrical component, it has a range in which it can operate. But that said, uh, we will get into programming in our in our next lesson.